Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories down in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is, Boss forgot that I'm the only one with access to those files and fires me. I served as a system administrator for this international corporation for more than 10 years. I was in charge of the manufacturing sector, primarily of the core systems that manage the near real-time data exchange between the manufacturing systems and the ERP system. The corporation had plenty of money for foolish projects, but there was never enough money for those pricey, specially designed data munching systems. Since I am also an experienced software engineer, which was one of the reasons my previous boss hired me, I started implementing my own ideas as soon as I started working at the company. I won't go into too much detail, but I chose to make the material web-based to facilitate update rollout. It was quite effective, and as time went on, more and more features were added on to this simple-to-improve and simple-to-update system. A mix of brand new items and outdated software that was urgently in need of replacing. This system became fairly important to the manufacturing process after about 10 years, and sure, there were hot standby servers, numerous daily backups, and other things. I am permitted to utilize open source software for my database because of the tight financial restrictions. I'm also permitted to utilize and maintain my own open source web system as the backbone of everything, apart from a few tiny, carefully chosen company-specific components. In essence, the business is paying me to advance my open source project while also receiving a user-friendly, dependable system for me to use at work. So, I'm happy about that. My various bosses, we frequently change middle management, have always supported me. Another new boss arrived. He complains that the software is written in programming language since it's so outdated in our very first conversation. I inform him that several Fortune 500 organizations utilize it actively for their back-end and or front-end systems. He's not content. He also inquires about how I handle the project's paperwork and how my previous employers handled it. I explain to him that since the users and department heads are satisfied with how I manage the project on my own, my former supervisors didn't manage anything, and that everything I do via mail is preserved on the archive mail server in accordance with the law. He's furious about that. A few weeks later, my supervisor tells me that my job is a separate company within our company and that it must end, regardless of how well-liked and respected I am within the organization. I have to complete a lot more pointless paperwork, need two people's approval for even the smallest update or bug repair, and my boss is typically a jerk about my job. He also complains loudly that I work alone on my projects and that I'm trying to destroy the business by doing so. However, I have records that show everything that I asked the person who was my employer at the time for 10 years every month to have a backup and was consistently turned down. You must understand that I have Asperger's syndrome and that I typically struggle to deal with situations like these. But I have so far always succeeded. For the first time in almost 25 years, I left early while sobbing. The bullying continues, and over the course of the following year, my employer gradually eliminates all of my responsibilities. As a result, I don't always complete my 40-plus hours of work each week. After everything is completed, I see that getting me fired immediately for now working as long as my teammates was actually his major strategy. But since I had never experienced something like it, simply didn't make sense to me at the time. Near the end of February, my boss makes me train the backup. I just get to coach him for one day. I remarked to my supervisor that he's very inexperienced and young and that he lacks knowledge of the company's policies and procedures and a decade's worth of software development. Additionally, he lacks programming language proficiency. The next day, HR calls and informs me that it is my last day of work after I have to attend a pricey one-hour training course and then have lunch. 
Although I don't have the customary 90 days, this is my last day of employment. In my nation, this is unusual and only legal if both parties agree. However, I accept it because I will receive a large severance payment and start receiving unemployment benefits from the next day. I keep quiet to HR about my intention to resign the next month due to the ongoing harassment. I have one hour to organize my workspace and bid my employees farewell. The final action I take is to observe as one of my backups deletes my accounts in accordance with business policy. This also applies to my web system's admin account, after which I go. I leave work and temporarily disable business access to my privately owned public source code management before working over the weekend to essentially fork my own project, renaming all the classes and other components, and re-releasing it on my SCM under the new name. Just so that the firm will find it challenging to apply all future bug patches and security updates that I make. Never tamper with my proprietary information. In the excitement of the moment, I intentionally neglect to explain that all of the system documentation for the web system is also saved on the system and is connected to the user account of the person who produced it, myself in this case for everything. A user account with active documentation can now be deleted since on delete restrict is enabled. My coworker cheerfully types the necessary command into the database shell directly because there is a known safety feature in the software that precludes deleting admin accounts through the interface. The phrase delete from users where username equals the Asperger admin cascade is well known and effective. Normal protocol would require the person performing the task to first assign a separate user to that material, but what the heck, I was fired and it was not my fault. This was clearly outlined in both the material he recently erased and an email I sent out a few months prior. We utilized a well-known messaging app for real-time communication and soon began using it for private messaging as well because my group is still close after a week, at which point the messages began pouring in. In several manufacturing facilities, certain sections of the system aren't functioning properly, and several manufacturing processes have come to a complete halt. They are unable to determine what's wrong because the paperwork is nowhere to be located. According to what I understand, after I left the company, they discovered that I had a second account on the system that was flagged as developer account. Don't change without talking to the Asperger admin first. Backup removed it because she was no longer employed by the organization. Additionally, the developer system accounts running maintenance tasks were erased and the system crashed as a result. There was chaos and there was emergency meetings. When something went wrong, the corporation would always hold meetings rather than trying to fix it. They first contacted me at that point. Backup. You need to be here straight soon and address this issue. On the phone already, Company Central is screaming. They are going bat crap. Provides extensive additional details on the issue and current business conditions. I said to them, sorry bro, I don't work for the company anymore. Back up. But it's your system and all these files are your intellectual property. Was my system. Remember last week when I was effective immediately fired? I'm no longer an employee there. However, we're in difficulty. First of all, you just broke corporate policy by telling me all that stuff since I don't work there anymore, and you may be fired for it, but I won't because you're a somewhat innocent spectator in this situation. Second, HR told me that they wanted to get me out the door right away because a disgruntled employee with my kind of system knowledge is a security nightmare, I said on the day I was dismissed. However, you don't seem to be angry, do you? No playing it safe. However, neither you nor management can be certain. Are you ready to accept the full responsibility if I gain access to your systems and hack them? Oh no, you see my boss ain't paying me that well. Third, if I assist you in any way, shape, or form, I could get into serious trouble. What? See, if something goes wrong accidentally, the corporation can't sue their own staff. Similar clauses are included in the contracts of suppliers who are likewise insured. Since I'm neither of those, if I make a mistake or the corporation just claims I did when I didn't, I can find myself in serious financial problems. I simply cannot take the chance. 
what if we hire you as an outside contractor or supplier? You would have to have an offer signed by names of four persons after I created the firm, obtained insurance, and engaged in negotiations with your purchasing department to be added to your list of suppliers. That would require two to four months in total. I would then have to wait another three to four months for the money. Sadly, I must decline. I need your help. We are in a really sticky situation with my boss, who's also my former boss. How can we help? I'm sorry, but I'm unable to assist the business, since it would put my safety at risk. Furthermore, allowing me to assist would go against your own corporate policy. Pretty please. Tell you what, I said. Don't go through the boss. Instead, call Corporate Central personally and explain what happened. Tell them that on your boss's instruction, you deleted those user accounts and violated the system. And let them know that you depended solely on your boss's directions because you lacked the necessary expertise and experience to predict what would happen. It turns out that a few days later, Backup did call Company Central. Boss was enduring hell, was dismissed, and was placed on the never hire again anywhere in the company blacklist due to another pricey heist he's conducted, which the organization discovered soon after he was fired. How am I aware? I still have many friends working there, and I keep up with the news through word of mouth. Backup is still employed, and his new employer is even less capable. Backup's now prepared to look for other employment. He asked me yesterday how he was going to depart his company which brought to mind the desire to create this post. And so here we are. Looking at it impartially, it's really saddening to hear how your previous boss treated you, particularly when you had dedicated over a decade of hard work to that company. The dedication you showed in your comprehensive expertise had a significant influence on the creation and continuous functioning of the crucial systems that guaranteed a smooth manufacturing process. It's really unfortunate that your recent supervisor failed to acknowledge the value of your hard work and the positive impact it had on the organization. The situation took a dramatic turn when you were let go, and it's understandable that you felt hurt and were frustrated by the way it was handled. Engaging in the protection of your unique concepts and pursuing a fresh endeavor with a distinct title may appear as a means of seeking revenge. However, it's crucial to bear in mind that you have every right to do so, considering the treatment you receive. Generally speaking, this story emphasizes the challenges that can arise when new leaders fail to recognize and appreciate the value of experienced employees and their contributions to a company's success. The next story is, Annoying neighbor was always complaining about me for nothing. And they get a huge surprise. This incident occurred a few years ago, around the middle of fall, while I was in year 11 of my high school. Consider that it was terribly dry, because this is Australia. Our AN issues a formal complaint to us. This shouldn't come as a huge surprise, because at this point, he was sending us formal complaints every two weeks or so about anything he could think of, including too little or too much noise, our dog, our slope eroding, and more. It was delivered in his customary lawyer-style letters. Anyway, this guy had sent us a letter saying that we were to blame for contaminating his water with blue-green algae and that we would be responsible for all losses to his property, including the costs of treating his horses. Now, while we were having our dam built, this guy was moaning about how the runoff from our pots would change the nitrogen level in the water. So when Dad built this, he went all out. This made my mother and father very angry. He built two smaller dams stocked with reeds and other natural water filter plants that served as the first two filters in a system of natural filtration that all the water would pass through. Following that, it would pass through a chlorinator and then a pump-powered filter. Dad would continuously pump the water to keep it aerated and backwash mains into the dam once a month to maintain the dam's proper pH. So my parents just said, no. So our neighbors commit the biggest error of his life by calling Melbourne Water to inspect our dam and test the water. And guess who was responsible for paying the price? When MB arrives, he is furious since his teammate called out ill 
leaving him in charge of collecting water samples from all water inflows and overflows as well as the dam itself. He must also conduct salinity and pH tests on the samples before returning them to the lab for additional analysis. I walked outside to chat to him about it since I found it intriguing at the time because I was studying chemistry. He took a peek at our setup and, to put it mildly, was rather impressed. He questions why the neighbor is being investigated given that he's the one with blue-green algae and that it's so dry that water hasn't spilled over from our dam to his. He quickly understands all the crap our neighbor gives us and shows us his sympathies. A few years ago, the neighbor advised us to reinstall our connecting fence in order to keep our dogs in, and Dad had to pay for it all. When he's ready to finish, he asks about the fence line that crosses the AN's dam. Dad was furious and made the decision to reassess the boundary of our property. He refused to give this man a single inch of land, even if it meant cutting through his dam. As a result, Melbourne Water grinned and said, well, I guess I'll have to get a sample of that as well, won't I, since it is your water. He then discusses our choices with my dad and informs them that the review on the water contamination will be scheduled soon. The council then asks us to sit down for a meeting with A.N. there. All he knew was that it was about water contamination and he's sporting a smug expression. A.N. just looks perplexed as to why I have a council meeting like this, but... MB isn't finished yet, going on to say that the contamination did not come from our dam and likely came from AN's horse poo runoff into his dam. But without further testing on AN's property, there'd be no conclusive evidence. He continues by saying that because we are receiving a cubic meter of water from his dam, there has been contamination of our water. He reportedly became pale as soon as he realized what this meant for him he would have to make up for the harm that he's done us. He recovered fast, saying, We do not use that cubic meter of water and therefore do not have damage. Now it was my mother's turn. When customers came over to view our plants, she got up and informed the council she wanted to utilize this water for a water exhibit, but couldn't because it was contaminated. The council had already seen the designs and agreed. In order to cleanse the water so we could create our water garden, the AN was compelled to hire Melbourne Water to come out and locate the contamination. They then installed a filtration system similar to ours, which Dad paid about $20,000 for. This story is a perfect example of how people who deliberately try to make things difficult for other people can end up getting what they deserve. The neighbor, who was bothersome, appeared to have an excessive amount of free time and was determined to cause troubles for your family's plant nursery. The way your parents handled the situation, displaying great patience and perseverance, is truly admirable, despite his continual complaints and grievances in a lawyer-like manner being obviously annoying. MB's involvement in the matter was an unexpected stroke of luck, which ultimately had a pretty significant impact on the outcome. A.N. experiencing the consequence of having to cover the cost of water testing, only to later realize that his own dam was the source of the contamination, is a prime example of poetic justice. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you soon.